Let's examine a critical component of the Azure Geospatial Cloud, ArcGIS Pro. As the premier desktop GIS application, Pro continues to grow with new features that increase productivity and enhance spatial science workflows. Now, I want to tell you up front, the science in this first presentation is coming in at light speed, so I hope your hyperdrive's engaged. To fly us through the latest release of ArcGIS Pro, please welcome my colleague, Ankita Bakshi. Thank you, James. This morning, I'm going to show you some of the new and exciting enhancements to ArcGIS Pro. Using National Weather Service data, I'm going to show you six productivity enhancements. Each polygon on this map represents a severe thunderstorm warning of 2019. Before I start exploring this data spatially, I noticed that some of these warnings are abbreviated as SV. So let's clean that up. The first enhancement is a find and replace option. And with just a click, everything updates. These are tens and thousands of overlapping polygons. And visually, it's pretty hard to make sense of it. The second enhancement is a geoprocessing tool to count overlapping features. This tool makes this massive data set easy to visualize. These darker red locations are the places with the highest number of overlapping polygons. Next, I want to explore my data temporally, which brings me to the third enhancement, a calendar heat chart. Using this temporal chart, I can easily visualize that I have stronger patterns in spring and summer months. And I can even click through each day to see the spatial extent of thunderstorms that led to these warnings. I created a model to repeat this workflow for other warning types, like winter, heat, tornado, and flood, leading me to the fourth enhancement, is the ability to export your model and send it to a Python window without even having to write even a single piece of code. I have this ready-to-use Python script. The fifth enhancement is the integration of ArcGIS notebooks. Now you can create, edit, and save Jupyter notebooks as a part of your ArcGIS Pro project. Using snippets from this auto-generated code, I can complete my notebook. The result of my notebook analysis is a predominance map that tells me which type of warning is most predominant in each of the US counties. The sixth enhancement is a new calendar, is a, is a new chart symbology that lets me quickly visualize the distribution of all the warning types using charts on the map. And that's just six of the productivity enhancements. Next, I'll talk about some of the advancements in spatial science. Let me take you to my home country, India, to examine associations between peaceful protest and violent demonstrations. The Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project collects and categorizes conflicts from around the world. For this example, I want to analyze co-location between two specific categories of conflicts, peaceful protest and violent demonstrations, using a new tool called co-location analysis. The tool uses a spatial statistical method to examine if violent demonstrations are found near peaceful protests, not only in space, but also in time. Let's say last year, during the Indian elections, a peaceful demonstration was staged. And at a neighboring location, a violent demonstration erupted yesterday concerning the Citizenship Amendment Act, which is a hot topic in the country right now. These locations, these two events can be close in space, but they are months apart in time. 
So the tool is looking at all the peaceful protests and violent demonstrations in the country since 2016. The output gives me these dark brown locations that tell me that these two, conf these two types of conflicts are significantly co-located, concentrating near the capital and the border of the country. Since time is such, a, such an important factor to this analysis, and this data is being updated on a regular basis, let me introduce you to a new feature, scheduling your analysis. Now I can schedule to run this analysis weekly, let's say on every Sunday, so that I have the most up-to-date analysis before the start of my work week. Next, let's go back to the US. Have you ever tried to compare two maps visually? More specifically, have you ever wanted to compare two maps statistically? Well, the next capability statistically compares two maps for you. This map in orange represents the percentage of households with no internet access. And this map in green shows minority population. I want to explore if there are any potential disparities in the ways internet is accessed across the country, also known as the digital divide using a new tool called Local Bivariate Relationships, I can find statistical relationships between lack of internet access and minority population. And how does the tool do that? Well, it uses a fundamental concept of information theory called entropy. The result of my analysis is an overwhelming positive linear relationship. And to understand what that means, I can click on any of these locations and instantly see on a pop-up chart that as the minority population increases in those areas, so does the lack of internet access. In darker pink locations, I can see an intensifying relationship in the digital divide represented by a convex line. This kind of analysis can help inform policy and decision-making towards increasing equitable access to digital services. Now, we have talked about exploring inequalities. Next, let's talk about creating equalities, using the next capability to create balanced zones. Our health agencies have been working relentlessly to provide services and resources to those in need. Using the CDC data and a machine learning algorithm called Random Forest, I modeled the percentage of population with chronic kidney disease in the state of Alabama. One potential way to reduce the cost and improve the efficiency of providing services is to create balanced administrative zones. And to do that, I'm going to use a new tool aptly named Build Balanced Zones which uses a genetic algorithm in machine learning. The, I, let's create 20 zones and balance the population with chronic kidney disease. I can add additional criteria like income and distances to nearest dialysis centers. The tool spatially optimized these input constraints and created 20 balanced zones. What this means is that with a balanced workload, every patient would get the opportunity to get access to equitable health services. Switching gears, let me take you to one more state, Alaska. Generating a fishing industry economy of over $4.4 billion, it is susceptible to global changes in our oceans. Here, we are looking at sea surface temperatures aggregated annually from 1980 to 2015. With, the eyes in, with our eyes in the sky, there's a ton of imagery and remotely sensed data available across the entire planet. In ArcGIS Pro 2.5, we added a whole new set of tools to do multi-dimensional analysis on raster and imagery data. Using the anomaly detection tool, I can find any anomalies in my sea surface temperature. And for the year 2015, 
the tool not only detected these high temperature anomalies in the Central Pacific due to a common phenomenon called the El Nino, but also picked out this mysterious marine heat wave. This heat wave, also known as the blob, traveled from Alaska in 2014 to Mexico, and by the end of 2015, had triggered such a prolonged season of algae blooms that it tremendously impacted the Pacific fishing economy. A peculiar observation, which otherwise would have gotten lost in this massive data set. These new tools and enhancements are just a few examples of the ways we are constantly working on improving productivity and advancing spatial science. ArcGIS Pro is a powerful data science workstation. We can explore and understand our world and make data-driven decisions towards creating a sustainable, secure, and equitable future. Thank you.